Hey Southwest, welcome back to Wolf Fight. I'm Katie Pittman. And I'm Sam Elam, and we're excited to share the first show of the semester with you. Coming up, meet one Southwest staff member's furry friend. See how students can communicate without one of their five senses. And get an inside look at the world of competitive cheerleading. All this and more on the March edition of Wolf Bite TV. is just around the corner and we're all excited to spend a little extra time with our friends and families. I know I definitely am. I bet our pets will be excited to have us home as well. They definitely will be. One Southwest staff member allowed us to get a closer look at one of her furry family members and what makes him so special. We've all heard the cliche that dogs are man's best friend. This is even more true for Blue Valley Southwest familiar face English teacher Sarah Huppert. We got Dickens back in 2010. My husband and I were just shopping. He was walking around with a, with a volunteer and he had a little adopt me vest on. We saw him and we just fell in love. He'd been rescued off of like the streets. So I think just having food and like a warm bed was a big deal for him. He just fit in really quickly. Dickens had a smooth adjustment to his new home in life. He was a happy and healthy dog until he started slowing down in October of 2020. They said, you know, we, we noticed the lump. He had cancer and it was slow growing enough that um, it was just kind of like in his knee. And they're like, okay, well, we'll watch it. But once it starts affecting him walking wise, we, we probably need to amputate. There are almost 150 animal shelters in the KC metro area. Adopting a rescue is a selfless act that can give them another shot at a happy life, no matter the number of legs. Dogs are great, great part of life, and I would tell anyone to go for it because it's good to give them a home, and, and I just love coming home uh, every day and, and that look on his face of, oh, you're finally here. Just that pure love that only like a dog can feel for you, it's, it's pretty sweet. There is an extra layer of care, right? When you have a three-legged dog, you have to just be more mindful of certain things, you know, with the choice being lose a leg or maybe lose a dog. Of course, of course we lost the leg. He's, he's part of our family and uh, we're just gonna keep him alive and happy and healthy as long as we can. Reporting for Wolf Bite TV, this has been Libby Davis. Dickens is absolutely adorable and we're so glad he's doing well. Now, let's head over to Sam and hear about some recent accomplishments by our T-Wolves. What's up Southwest, I'm Sam Suarez. First up, our BPA team has done great with tons of state placements and national qualifiers. And a big congratulations to Alexis Dominic, who was elected as state officer. Next up, our wrestling team has also had an amazing run, with our very own Hayden Mills and Hannah Glynn coming away as state champs. Hannah is the very first state champion in Blue Valley Girls Wrestling, so a big congratulations to her as well. Lastly, Wolf Bite TV is proud to announce that we have won STN's Broadcast Excellency Award for the second year in a row, making us one of the best high school broadcast programs in the entire country. Now back to you Katie and Sam to see what the rest of the show has in store. We have some very talented students here at Southwest. We definitely do and we are so proud of all your hard work. Now let's see how both of us and some other students do when we try to finish the vine. Oh my god. Oh geez. This is what I did like in oh, all of my free time. You're gonna, you're gonna beat me. I hope so. I said it louder therefore I was right. Road work ahead. Oh, I sure yeah, hope, I it sure hope it does. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. Wow. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that one. Del Taco, they got a new thing called uh, Free Shavakadu. Free Shavakadu. Free Shavakadu. Yeah. Free, free Shavakadu. Shavakadu. My name is Troy Abba. I have a basketball game tomorrow. <laughs> My name is. Wait. Mm. I have a basketball game tomorrow. Well, I'm a point guard, I got shoe game. Oh! <laughs> no, I was thinking of something so much worse. The other 
trucker, dude. Oh, that, that hurt, hurt like a butt, butt cheek, cheek on a stick. stick. That hurt like a butt cheek on a stick. Yeah. What? I'm about to say it. <laughs> Something about like no one cares. I don't, I don't care that you broke your elbow. Or is it hurt? I was, I was about to say knee, but is it it's, out, it's elbow. Oh. I don't care that you broke your elbow. <laughs> I don't care that you broke your elbow. Oh, hi. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of, of garbage. Still, still a piece of garbage. Look at all those chickens. Look at all those chickens. Look at all those chickens. I think it was chickens. Hurricane Katrina. Oh, I don't know this one. No, don't know what that is. No. More like hur Hurricane Tortilla. <laughs> yeah, no, you got that? More like, More like Hurricane, hurricane Tortilla. tortilla. <laughs> Let's go. I gotta say, I definitely beat you. Nope, I was for sure the winner. Agree to disagree, I guess. With the deadline for NHS service hours coming up, many of us are looking to get those last few hours that we need. Let's look at a local organization that has helped many kids with their service hours and has done great things in our community. We have volunteers arrive as early as 8 o'clock. We will huddle up, get assignments posted, and then we'll say a quick prayer, and then we'll have people come in and start shopping. The food pantry started as the hope chest, a physical chest in the hallway. And from that beginning years ago, it's, it's grown. The food pantry, located at the Church of the Resurrection in Overland Park, opened in 2019 with the purpose of bridging the food insecurity gap in our community. The pantry is open every Wednesday from 9 a.m. to noon and 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. We have in-person shopping and people can pick out what they want, which is really nice because then people take only what they need. We have people who sack up the groceries and take them out and load them in the cars um, when they're here, so there's a variety of ways that people can help. Volunteers come from many different walks of life but they all have some things in common, giving souls and the desire to serve their community. The volunteers are the heart of the food pantry and it wouldn't be possible without them. Meeting the people that work here is a blessing. Just the activity of moving stuff around and knowing that it's moved to a place where it can help somebody. And it's a great place for those of us who are able to, to work and fill it out. Just hope that we can keep it going and, and uh, keep serving our community. The Food Pantry is a great place to volunteer. To donate or get involved, you can go to core.org slash overlandpark slash local impact. Reporting for Wolf Bite TV, this has been Natalie Ayers. It was so cool to see all the hard work these volunteers have been doing and the difference they've made. Now, let's head over to Libby and see what's going on in the world around us. Thank you, Sam and Katie. Welcome to What's Trending, where we talk about the latest news and trends in the world around us. I'm your host, Libby Davis. First, let's talk about popular Netflix shows. Sweet Magnolias just released its second season, and Ozark concluded with four seasons in total. Both have been seen in Netflix's top 10 recently. Next, with spring break around the corner, people are starting to plan their vacations. According to Google search trends, Montego Bay, Punta Cana, and Cancun are expected to be popular destinations outside the U.S. If you're looking to stay inside the U.S., the Outer Banks in North Carolina is also expected to be a popular destination. Lastly, as of March 2nd, tensions are still high between Russia and Ukraine. In the last few days, some cities such as Kharkiv and the capital Kiev have been targeted by Russia. The United States imposed sanctions on Russia and is sending military equipment in order to help the Ukrainian soldiers. We encourage everyone to stay up to date on everything that is happening in regards of the conflict. Now, let's head back to Katie and Sam. Thank you, Libby, for updating us on all the latest news. Speaking of Netflix shows, though, have you watched season two of Cheer yet? I have not. Well, then let's see what competitive cheerleading means for some students here at Southwest. Competitive cheerleading, a sport that has soared in popularity over the last decade, but to the general population, the world of cheerleading seems to be unknown. We've interviewed two Southwest cheerleaders to get an inside look at the sport. So high school cheerleading is different from competitive cheerleading because in high school you get to cheer at games and shake pom-poms, but for competitive cheer is when you are with a team for about nine months and you practice almost daily and you put together a routine and you go compete around the country. They're thinking competitive cheer is like high school cheer, but when you see it you're like, whoa, this is like not what I was expecting at all. So what's it like to be a cheerleader? 
Risk, commitment, and fear is what these athletes take into practice every day. Competitive cheerleading is a very physical and extreme sport that requires lots of hours and time put into it. I feel like I push my body the same amount as a football player does or really any athlete does. You could end up you know, just having like a little bruise or honestly you could end up being left paralyzed. Athletes starting from the beginner level one all the way to the world-class athletes at the level seven division are all involved in the cheer world. The cheer world is honestly sometimes very positive, but definitely can have some negatives to it. Like sometimes there's accusations of gyms, teammates, there's like, can be a bunch of that. Competitive cheer has impacted lots of athletes across the world and has become a way of living for many. It's a lifestyle. It's definitely just become part of my daily routine. Cheer is definitely my whole life, I'd say. I don't even have a job because of it, because I'm either here at the school for high school cheer or at Casey Cheer for competitive cheer every day of the week. When I started doing this at a young age, I never knew how much I would love this sport. And honestly, I don't think I would be the same person without it. Reporting for Wolf Bite TV, this has been Mackenzie Walsinger. It is incredible the amount of talent and athleticism that it takes to perform those tricks and stunts. Now let's head over to Riley to hear what's been going on in the sports here at Southwest. What's up Southwest? I'm Riley Underwood, now with sports. First off is our wrestling team. I say they had 10 placement finishers including two runner-ups and two state champions. Our boys basketball team is doing great as well, including a 13-7 regular season finish and multiple team and individual record breakers, including Gino Kim, Sebastian Ham, and Cooper Schwieger. Our boys swim team is doing great. They placed fifth at state and the state finishers included Jack Hanahan, Nathan Kessner, and our 200 free relay. Great job to all our winter sports that have come to an end now and on to the spring. And for spring sports, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at BVSLB Broadcast and never miss an event. Now back to you guys. Thanks for the update, Riley. Now that we've heard about what our athletics have been up to, let's see if high school students share the same opinions on certain topics. People who have changed the world did things in small ways that like that didn't mean any money. Money you could like, it does determine you know somewhat successfulness based on like your lifestyle and everything but I say somewhat just because it can also be other stuff. Success is like what you do that like impacts the world not necessarily like how much you are impacted by it. Peer pressure can be a good thing at some point, but uh, sometimes, you know, maybe don't follow it. I think that sometimes it can be a good thing, and uh, also it can also lead to like it being a bad thing, and you can learn from it. Yeah, I think the positives outweigh the negatives because like I use it for marketing for my business. I just love connecting with my friends and family. I think personally it's just how you use social media. It can be a great source. Um, as he said, it can be used for business and connecting with family members who you can't see all the time. Things about a lot more negative things that like weren't as prevalent before social media. I've never been like bullied on social media. I know it happens. It can be used for negative um, negative things too, like comparing yourself and being bullied, so it's all about how you use it. It was so cool to see all the different answers students had to these questions. Now let's see how students answer in our edition of 10 Second Trivia. Hey Southwest, I'm Spencer Damasco. Welcome to 10 Second Trivia. Here we give you three questions in 10 seconds to answer them. Let's go. What is the most commonly used letter in the English alphabet? A, E, S, or T? E is the most commonly used appearing in 11% of words in the English dictionary. Which of these states does not observe daylight savings time? Delaware, Oregon, Arizona, or Alaska? Arizona, along with Hawaii, does not observe daylight savings time. On average, how many calls does the Overland Park Fire Department respond to in a year? 22,000, 18,000, 27,000, or 14,000? For this question, let's see how you compare to our Instagram followers. We asked them the same question and over 39% of our followers answered correctly. And a special shout out to Grace Knapp for being the first to answer correctly in our poll. 
participate in future activities like this, follow us on all of our social media at BVSW Wolfbite. Back to you, Katie and Sam. It's absolutely crazy to hear how many calls fire stations receive. With so many incoming calls, it's important to have trained professionals ready to respond. Well, Sam, let's take a look at how some Blue Valley students are getting a head start on learning the basics of firefighting and EMS. Not the power button. Give two breaths. Grab the, uh... Begin CPR. In hopes to one day make a difference, these students have found a way to pursue their passion of helping others. This program uh, is part of the Blue Valley District's Career Ready Programs. It helps introduce students to fire and EMS, and it also gives them an opportunity to take classes for college credit and certification in fire and EMS. So they show up here to class every day at our actual training facility. Uh, they get to work with a lot of personnel who are already on the department, uh, and they're going to learn the skills necessary to come get a job here. One student has especially taken a liking to this program and all of the things that it has taught him. Medical has really interested me in the past couple of years, so I thought it'd be a great experience. First, just knowledge, just kind of knowing a little bit more about medical and the body, how breathing and everything works like that, CPR, saving people's lives. While the program offers a unique experience for students, there are still many things that are hopeful for the future. I'm the administrator, so I'm kind of the one that's helping manage a lot of the curriculum. Really, I'm hoping to refine a process that helps them really be prepared to come into the workforce when they graduate. So that means tailoring a lot of the curriculum and experiences to help them meet that deadline. With programs like these, many students will continue to make differences in our community. Reporting for Wolf Bite TV, this has been Ava Williams. It is absolutely amazing to see how much real hands-on experience these students will have when they graduate. The Blue Valley Career Ready programs give students fantastic opportunities. Now let's give some Southwest students the opportunity to take on the Whisper Challenge. Who's your favorite teacher? Uh, uh, probably like cinnamon rolls. I don't know. <laughs> uh, strawberries. What's your favorite class? Mexico. Uh, red. <laughs> what was your favorite 2021 song? HBO Max. Uh, remember the Titans. <laughs> What's your favorite food? Um, ice cream. Milk. Who is the best Marvel character? Pink. LeBron James. Snapchat or TikTok? Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I don't know. Sour Patch Kids. What's your favorite thing about Southwest? Being um, nice. The Happy Gilmore. Uh, I like Jersey Mike's. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, I like Chipotle. How do you think you did on this <laughs> challenge? Uh, red. <laughs> <laughs> Pink. The green on the walls. Grease. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Candy? Did you say something? Did you say something? Is there anything else? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Can you repeat it? Is there anything else you'd like to add? Wait, was that a question? Oh. Uh, basketball? Soccer. Have a good day. Have a, yeah, have a good day. It's so funny to see how students communicate when they can't hear each other. We have so much fun creating these stories with you, and we're excited to share one more show with you towards the end of the year. Thank you so much for tuning in to our March edition of Wolf Bite TV. Be sure to follow us on all our social media at BVSW Wolf Bite, and tune into our live streams on our YouTube channel at BVSW Broadcast. See you next time. Bye. Bye.